all of these things shall be added unto you. So we must strive for salvation, for our own salvation. We must strive to be saved. We must strive to walk in the way and in the righteousness of Almighty God. But also, we must win everybody we can to our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Evangelism is not an option. Evangelism is a mandate. Come on, help me. Say that to your neighbor. Evangelism is not an option. It's a mandate. And it's more than a mandate. It is a strategy for survival. We must win the world or be destroyed by the world. Will somebody help me preach today? In the book of Acts 26, verse 13. The Lord Jesus said to Saul, who became the apostle of Paul, Rise, stand on your feet, for I have appeared to you for this purpose, to make you a minister and a witness both of the things which you have seen and of the things which I will yet reveal to you. That's why the Lord called all of us. Jesus said you are to be a minister and a witness. That means you help minister to and show concern for people. And you serve them even as you witness to them. The Lord Jesus went on as he spoke to the Apostle Paul and said in verse 17, I will deliver you from the Jewish people as well as from the Gentiles to whom I now send you. How many of you know sometimes you need to be delivered from people before you can be sent to people? got to be able to take their worst and experience the worst that they can do and keep on loving God, keep on preaching, keep on serving God. That's something I've kind of learned how to do in these days. Somebody ought to say hallelujah. You can't really represent Jesus until you're willing to turn the attention of men to Jesus rather than to yourself. And then Jesus said to Paul in verse 18, you're going to open their eyes. Sin has blinded them so that they cannot find their way. And then he went on in verse 18 to say, in order to turn them from darkness to light, emotionally, mentally, and spiritually, sinners are in the darkness of the night. And he said, from the power of Satan to God, every person on earth is in a struggle against the devil. Without God's power, you cannot win the battle. We cannot win without the help and the power and the might of Almighty God. Then Jesus said, Paul, I want you to minister to them that they may receive forgiveness of their sins. That's what Jesus died for. He was wounded for our transgressions. He was bruised for our iniquities and the chastisement of our peace was upon him and with his stripes we're healed. All we like sheep had gone astray, but the Lord has laid on him the iniquity of us all. And so the Lord Jesus went on and said to the Apostle Paul that they, they, they need an inheritance among those who are sanctified by faith in me. And so Jesus said they have no inheritance. But if you win them, I'll adopt them and make them joint heirs with me. Uh, are there any royal children in the house? I'm a royal child. I'm adopted into the royal family, and I'm kept by the power of God. Be careful how you deal with me. I'm a child of the king. I'm a child of God. Hallelujah. My father is rich in houses and in lands. He holds the wealth of the world in his hands of rubies and diamonds, silver and gold. His coffers are full. You, he has silver and gold. When you win a soul, you rob the devil of one more victim. Don't you like to rob the devil? The devil is robbing us in so many ways. We need to rob him of one more victim. When you win a soul, you give that person a new lease on life. When you win a soul, you, ex you help him to escape sorrow and to find joy. You may not give him a material possession, but when you win him, you give him something that money cannot buy. When you win a soul, you break the yoke of sin and oppression in his life 
and you add to the gospel team the very soul that you win may be the soul that will strengthen you and enable you in the Lord. When you win a soul, you start a celebration in heaven because there's more joy in heaven over one soul that repents than over 99 that need no repentance. When you win a soul, you make the world a better place. Saints are good folk who will treat everybody right. And what we really need in the world are some more saints, some more people who love the Lord. And so Jesus said, go into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. And he who believes and is baptized shall be saved. But he who does not believe will be condemned. And then Jesus went on. And I like this next part. And he said, and these signs will follow them who believe. Going down just a half step. And have a breath. Thank you for that. Uh -huh. These signs will follow them who believe in my name. They will cast out demons in my name. They will speak with new tongues. If they will take up serpents, and if they drink anything deadly, it will by no means hurt them. They will lay hands on the sick, and they will recover. But let me ask you a question. If we don't go, how can we expect the signs to follow us? Come on, tell your neighbor, if we don't go, how can we expect the signs to follow us? Hallelujah. The writer James said that he who turns a sinner from the error of his way will save a soul from death and cover a multitude of sins. And in the book of Daniel, the Bible says, those who are wise shall shine like the brightness of the firmament. Oh, bless the name of God. And those who turn many to righteousness like the stars forever and forever and so we are fighting for salvation and for righteousness these are the prizes are the treasures that we must seek and we must share with everybody that we can we've got to spread it all over the earth on the day of judgment there will be some who may say to the church you call me a friend but I cannot now call you friend I was lost in sin I knew nothing of the Lord I didn't know it but you loved Jesus you were a child of God every morning we'd wave hello to one another and drive toward our place of work every evening we would meet when we would come in and have our time with family and time at home we'd come out in the afternoon as we watered the lawn we'd talk about the weather we talk about world affairs, but you never told me about Jesus. I was lost on my way to hell, but you never said Jesus could save me. Though I call you friend on the earth, I cannot now call you friend. Because if you'd been my friend, you would not have allowed me to live on this earth and then go to hell. Church of God, I don't want the world to condemn us. Poke around our church. They're in our communities. But let's tell it to everybody. Let's let the world know that Jesus saved. That Jesus can transform. That Jesus can turn your life around. Tell it over the backyard fence. Tell it sitting on the bus stop. Tell it as we walk through and fro in the stores of this earth. Tell it to the prostitute. Tell it to the pimp that everybody know. Jesus is a savior. Jesus can change your life. Come on, clap your hands and praise the Lord. Salvation 
is worth more than anything. I'd rather have Jesus than silver or gold. I'd rather be his than have riches untold. I'd rather have Jesus than anything this world affords today. Tell your neighbor, take the world, but give me Jesus. Hallelujah! Jesus can turn your life around. Jesus can fill your heart with joy. I never knew joy before until I met him. Tell two people I'm glad I know him. Tell him I'm glad that he's in my life. Hallelujah! Glory! I'm ready to stop. But there's one word that we haven't dealt with yet. There's one word that we have not talked about. That word is fighting. Say it to your neighbor, fighting. Tell somebody else we're fighting. Fighting for salvation. Fighting for righteousness. If you're playing while your enemy is fighting, you lose every time. Tell your neighbor, neighbor, if you're playing while your enemy is fighting, you will lose every time. ISIS is fighting. Al-Qaeda is fighting. The terrorists are fighting. They will die for what they believe in. They'll come to a strange nation, live in that nation as an alien, live undercover, knowing they're going to die. They'll come out of their hiding place, kill a thousand people, kill a hundred people, kill fifty people, and then die in a barrage of gunfire from their enemies and say they're glad to die for what they believe in. Child of God, if they will die for what they believe in, why don't we live for what we believe in? I don't know about you, but I live, I live for him who died for me. I live for the one that shed his blood. Tell your neighbor, neighbor, let's live for Jesus. Neighbor, let's fight for Jesus. So the text says, fight the good fight of faith and lay hold on eternal life. Fight with all that's in you. Fight with every ounce of your energy. Fight, hallelujah. I used when I was in elementary school, there was a boy named Richard who would beat me up every day. Every day when school was out, I know I could expect a beating from Richard. Every day he pushed me and hit on me. And one day I was on my way home from school. And as you might expect, a half a block from school, there stood Richard in the middle of the sidewalk waiting on Charles Blake to come by and get his beating. I got there with my little books under my arm, tried to walk around Richard. Richard knocked my books on the ground and began to push me. I got desperate. I got finished. Way down deep in my heart, I said, I'm not going to take it anymore. Will you tell somebody I'm not going to take it anymore? I closed my eyes and I swung with a right with all my might. I kept on moving in the same movement. I grabbed my books and I started running down the street. The next day I came back to school with fear and trepidation in my heart. I knew Richard was going to get me that day. But I somehow I began to turn around and out of the corner of my eye, I snuck a look at Richard. And when, look, when Richard saw me look in his direction, his eyes jerked down toward his desk, and he would not look me in the eye. That gave me a chance and bonus to turn around and take a real good look. And when I looked, on the right side of Richard's face was a brown spot. 
and I reasoned that was about where I would have hit him if I hit him and then I looked again and I said I did hit him I hurt him he's scared I turned around in my seat and I said meet me after school today it's you and me come on down by the swing hallelujah I went down after school and I waited by the swing. I was waiting on Richard to show up. 15 beatings had been brewing up inside me. I decided I'm going to beat him today. Richard never showed up. Richard never gave me any more trouble. And he did nothing with some other folk in the class too. And they decided that if Charles Blake could beat Richard, I believe I can beat Richard too. My classmates lined up to get Richard. Child of God, stop being a pushover. For the devil, tell two people, it's time, it's time to fight. The weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but they are mighty in God for the pulling down of strongholds. Tell your neighbor, neighbor, pull it down, casting down arguments and every hard thing that exalts itself against the knowledge of God. Paul said, finally, be strong. Oh, be strong in the Lord and in the power, power, power of his might. Put on the whole arm of God and stand, 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 yes, yes, stand, anyhow, hallelujah, I command you, Satan, in the name of the Lord, pick up your weapon and flee, God has given me authority to walk, walk all over you. If you've got a message for the devil, put it on the bottom of my shoe. Because the devil is under my feet. Tell your neighbor, neighbor. Oh, neighbor. The devil is under your feet. I give you power to tread on serpents and on scorpions. And over all the power of the enemy. Yeah. the power. Tell him again, neighbor. You've got the power. I've got power. And you can't see. God is living inside me. I can fight any enemy for God and me. I am a geologist. Tell your neighbor, neighbor. I can fight any enemy for God and me. I am a geologist. I know you've got some riches. I said you've got some riches in your life who try to intimidate you. They try to snatch your children away. They try to block your blessing. They try to thwart your ministry. They try to hold you back, but you've got to hold up your fence and say, Devil, you can't have my joy. Devil, you can't have my peace. Devil, you better get out of my way. The Bible says, if I resist you, you flee from me. Hallelujah. I'm going to fight for my family. I'm going to fight for my community. I'm going to fight for my people. I'm going to fight for the church. I'm going to fight for Jesus Christ. The fight is on. I said, the fight is on. Listen, soldiers, tell your neighbor, neighbor, let's fight. Tell them, let's fight. Tell them again, let's fight. We can win this thing. We can win it. You've got the power. I said, you've got the power. Tell your neighbor, neighbor, you've got the power. 
Come on, praise him. Praise him. What are you talking about, preacher? What are you talking about? Jesus said, you shall, you shall receive power, power after the Holy Ghost has come upon you. And you shall be witnesses unto me in Jerusalem, Judea, Samaria, unto the outermost part of the earth. Hallelujah. Your seed, your seed shall inherit nations and make desolate cities inhabited. Your seed shall reach out all over the earth. I'm no longer concerned about a block or a lot. I want to take my city for Jesus Christ. Tell your neighbor, neighbor, I'm not worried about a block or even a lot. I want to take my city for Jesus. I want to tell the world about Jesus. Come on, raise that hand and say, Jesus. Coming King, come on and give him praise. Give him praise. Give him praise. Give him praise. Tell to people, neighbor, we need the power of the Holy Ghost. Let me tell you something. The Holy Ghost is here right now. Holy Ghost is all over this place, in the back of the room, up and down every aisle, in between every seat. Tell your neighbor, neighbor, the Holy Ghost is here right now. The Holy Ghost is the promise of God. Jesus said, the whole I sin, the promise of my Father upon you. And Simon Peter said, the promise is unto you and to as many as the Lord our God shall call. And when the child of God lifts up his hand, he says, Lord, you promised me the power. You promised me the Holy Ghost. And Lord, I can't make it without the power. I can't endure without the anointing. Lord, you promised. Raise that hand and say, Lord, you promised me the Holy Ghost. Lord, fill me again. Bless me again. Lift me again. Yes. Tell your neighbor what he's promised. He's able. I said he is able to perform. Son of God, if you need it, you can have it. And I assure you, you need the power of the Holy Ghost. The Holy Ghost comes in when the saints praise God, when they worship God. The Holy Ghost shows up. Oh, yes, it does. Praise is the throne that he sits on. He is enthroned in the praises of his people. And church of God, we need the Holy Ghost to move in this place. When you praise him, he shows up. When you feel his presence, that's your signal that you have the right to speak in tongues as the Spirit gives out of it. Tell your neighbor, neighbor, you've got the right to speak in tongues. You've got the right to praise him in a language that you have not learned. The disciples got in trouble. They went back to church and said, Lord, behold their threatening. Ran unto your servants, that with all boldness they may speak your word by stretching out your hand to heal that signs and wonders might be done in the name of Jesus. Raise your hand and say, in the name of Jesus. Yes, yes, yes. When they had prayed, when they had prayed, when they had prayed, tell your neighbor, when they had prayed, the place was shaken where they were sitting, and they were all, all filled with the Holy Ghost. 
speak the word of God with boldness. When I count to three, let's bombard heaven with our praise so we get filled and filled again and blessed again and get the power one more time. Raise your hand and say, Lord, one more time. One more time. In the name of Jesus, when I count to three, let's praise him. One, two, three, praise him. Authority to walk all over me. 
I command you, sir, in the name of the Lord, take up your weapon and flee. For God has given me authority to walk all over. Well, I command you, Satan, in the name of the Lord. one time but multiple times on Sunday I see your city impacted by your church I see folk being delivered I see folk being set free I see folk being lifted I see you in the future and you look much better than you look right now come on and praise it for your future praise it and you want to know him. You want his power, his presence, his salvation, his joy. You want to be forgiven of your sins. Lift up that hand wherever you are. I'll pray for you right where you are. Right where you are, I'll pray for you right there. Lift that hand up. If you want to know him, you want to know Jesus, lift that hand, raise it, lift it high. Lift that hand high. Lift that hand high. If you're not saved, if you're a backslider, if you've become separated from the Lord, those hands are lifted up. Dear Lord, I pray for every uplifted hand. I pray that everyone who wants you will have you tonight. I pray, dear Lord, that you come into their lives and that they'll never be the same again. In the name of Jesus, save them and deliver them from their sins. Repeat this prayer after me. Dear Lord, I'm sorry for my sin. Forgive me for the wrong I've done. I want to be saved. I believe that Jesus is the Son of God. I believe he died for me. I believe he arose from the dead. I accept Jesus as my Lord and my Savior. And I thank you, Lord, I am saved. I thank you, Lord, I am forgiven. I thank you, Lord, I have new life.
Come on, let's praise God for new life. Praise Him, praise Him, praise Him, praise Him, praise Him, praise Him. Praise him. is here right now. Power of God is here. Hallelujah. 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 Well, if I thought y'all really wanted to shout, I'd give you time to. It may look like you really want to, so you may need to just go on to the next thing. How many of you feel a shout coming on? Come on, brother organ, let's help us out. Here. So that's the neighbor to hey neighbor, neighbor, we are fighting. I said we are fighting for salvation and righteousness in a violent and immoral world. And we're going to win this fight. Come on, tell three people, we're going to win this fight. We're going to win it. We're going to win it. In the name of Jesus, greater is he that is in you than is he that is in the world. I want everybody in the house of God get a $20 seed in your hand, a $20 seed. Pastors, ministers, give them a $50 seed, if you will. People of the Lord, get a $20 seed. Prepare to share it with the work of the Lord. Have you got it in your hand? When you're ready, stand, please. And I want everybody in God's house. Give either a $50 or a $20 seed. If you cannot do that, give as near to that as you possibly can. My heart was just touched a few moments ago as the love of the saints was poured out on me. The Lord said, just write a check for 10000 and give it to this ministry, to the work of the Lord. How many of you feel it was God's will that we should come to New Mexico? How many of you feel like this is a God thing? I think people have a new insight into the church of God in Christ. They know who we are in a special way now that we've come to this place. I want Elder Macklin, Bishop Macklin, seeking, struggling to find ways of meeting the needs of this meeting. I want him to have more than enough. Everybody say that, more than enough. <coughs> say it one more time, more than enough. I'm giving another $100. I want you to get the best gift that you can get. Prepare to share it with the work of the Lord. Everybody stand. Everybody stand, please. Everybody stand. If you have less than I have asked to give, I want you to give your best. Do your best. Share it with the work of the Lord, and the work of God will be best. Lift, lift your gift. Lord, we thank you and praise you for the privilege of blessing your work. You've been so good to us. And dear Lord, we know that you've given us resources that you intend that we should reinvest. And if we reinvest them in your work, you'll replenish our supply so that we'll have more than enough. Say, this is my seed to more than enough. This is my seed for more than enough. In Jesus' name, amen. Clap your hands, everybody. I want you to pass your gift to your right. Pass your gift to your right. The ushers and attendants will come and receive it. God bless you. While you're doing that, I want Pastor James Walker to come. Quickly, Pastor James Walker, if you're here, raise your hand if you're here and let us know you're on the way. Pastor James Walker, Pastor James Walker, if you're here present, where are you? He's on the way? All right. As you know, our Urban Initiative program is seeking to certify hundreds of churches in the Church of God in Christ that if all participate will result in 60,000 
community programs impacting the neighborhoods around our churches all over the world. One such church, the Faith Temple Church of God in Christ, pastored by Pastor James Walker, has completed all the requirements for church certification and is officially designated as a certified church. It's my honor to present to you this certificate of accomplishment and attainment. We're so proud of what you've done and we want to present this to so many other churches of God in Christ. How many are certified now for the past several hundred churches? And wh where are you from? Where do you live? Right here in Albuquerque. Come on, let's clap our hands and praise God for a certified church in the city of Albuquerque, New Mexico. Give him another rousing applause. God bless you. I love you with the love of the Lord. the Lord, everybody. All right. We're going to go home. we got to get out of here. How many believe that the anointing starts at the head and flows down? Am I the only one that believes that? How many know that the anointing was on the head tonight? I said, how many know that the anointing was on the head? Look at somebody and tell them, I got some of that tonight. I got some of that. I got some of that. Yeah, I got some of that. I got some of that. May the Lord bless you. Thank you. Bishop Blake, thank you so much. Oh, my God. See, that's what I'm talking about. That's what, that, that's what anointed leadership is all about. Amen, somebody. And, uh, nothing but the anointing destroys the yoke. Thank you. Oh, boy, boy. I'm not going to forget New Mexico no time soon. I tell you, this has been an awesome event. Thank you so very, very much, everybody. Let me remind you that um, immediately following this service, uh, we do have our repast for registered delegates. Registered delegates. All right? And if you are a registered delegate, please join us. And uh, we only have enough tonight for those who registered. I'm sorry. And I have to kind of work with that because they contributed to that cost. And it's right across the hall where we've been meeting at, at uh, for breakfast and for lunch. And uh, if you would come there, hopefully you have your badge with you. But uh, that's where we're going to be, right across the hall. And you can go there immediately. You don't have to go looking tonight trying to find something or waiting in a long line. You can go there tonight and uh, enjoy the repast. I uh, might add that uh, tomorrow, I just want to emphasize tomorrow morning, it's not over yet. Tomorrow morning at uh, 8 o'clock, a powerful breakfast setting. Uh, Dr. Barbara Little, Attorney Barbara Little, is someone very, very special. Not only an attorney, but she's a part. How many have ever heard of John Maxwell? She is, uh, was a part of the founding John Maxwell group and still travels with them and is in contact with them and with John, of course, on a regular basis and still works for them from time to time. She's a powerful woman of God. And um, she's going to be with us tomorrow morning. And uh, if you have a vision, getting your vision to a place where there's alignment between your vision, your strategy, your finances, how do you put it all together? How do you hook up vision and mission and goals and values? And how does that flow so that your members will understand and so that those groups that you're leading in the church will understand where you're going and how you're going to get there. This is why you come to leadership conferences to leave with that type of impartation. Tomorrow morning, she will be with us. She is a Church of God in Christ member. I said she's Church of God in Christ. And I've seen her this week just uh, having a good time in the Lord. She'll be with us tomorrow morning. She's our very own. And so this time we didn't send out wave someplace we got our very own and she's well qualified you're going to be blessed if you come we'll give you a form and a workbook setting a kind of a working uh, document that you can use and you can go along with her with your own vision and she'll show you how to set it up is that all right by the time you get home you'll be ready to go so may the lord bless you thank you for that and then finally uh 
some of us, some of you were aware it was online only. We didn't do any other advertisement too much. But it was online when you registered. You noticed about us taking a, a train trip tomorrow post-conference. And uh, we're going to meet. Uh, this is a, a conference setting. Uh, it was aimed initially at, at couples. And, of course, we have others who have joined us. But tomorrow at 1 o'clock, we will meet back in the uh, ballroom area. We'll be there for about an hour and a half for a short conference setting. And then at 3.30, we need to be in the lobby of the hotel. Uh, I need to be as close right here at the, um, at the Hyatt Hotel. And uh, the buses will take us from here to the railway, railroad station, railway station. And uh, we'll get on the train. The train rides about an hour and a half. When you get off the train, because we haven't explained this, when you get off the train in Santa Fe, we have chartered buses that'll be waiting for you. You won't have to be in the cold. When you get off the train, get right on the bus. And that bus will take you all the way. It's quite a ride. We'll drive you for four blocks. And uh, we'll take you those four blocks. That's about, you didn't need no bus for that. That's what you say now. But when it's 25 degrees, you will go say, why didn't we have a bus? So I'm going to give you a bus. Those that don't need the bus, walk straight north. And uh, we'll be at the El Dorado Hotel. Wonderful. You're going to love this setting. And uh, we'll have our dinner there. It's banquet style. We'll have our presentation there. And you'll leave there laughing and happy about being married. And uh, that's going to take place. Coming back, you won't have to ride the train. Coming back, we'll get on the buses, and the buses will just bring us straight back. And that way, we won't be in the cold when you get back here because there's no place to stand when you get back. We'd have to wait for the buses to circle. So we've had the buses to just take us from Santa Fe and then bring us straight back to your hotel. Is that all right? And so we're going to have a good time, just a light time together, but I pray that uh, you will enjoy it. May the Lord bless you. I think that's all for this evening. May we all stand. Again, thank you all so much. Members of the board, general board, thank you all. I appreciate you all so much. I appreciate you. I love you all, everybody. Thank you so, so very, very much. And again, to our supporting uh, jurisdictions, received another $500 from uh, Bishop Colby in Oklahoma. And uh, they wanted to be a part of this. And so, Bishop, we received that. Thank you so very, very much. Come on, say man for Oklahoma. Bishop, would you come and uh, please send us home? Thank you again for blessing us. You see, somebody asked me to sing this, B flat. A flat. He cannot fail, for he is God. He cannot fail, he pledged his word. He cannot fail, he'll see you through. He cannot fail, he'll answer you. Sing that with me, he cannot fail, he cannot fail. For he is God, he cannot fail, he cannot fail. He pledged his word, he pledged his word. He cannot fail, he cannot, he'll see you through, he'll see you through. He cannot fail, he cannot fail, he'll answer you, he'll answer. Say it one more time, he cannot fail, he cannot. Look at your neighbor and sing it, for he is God, for he is God. He cannot fail, he cannot fail. He pledged his word, he pledged his word. He cannot fail, he cannot fail. He'll see you through, he'll see you through. He cannot fail, he cannot. Come on, say it again, he cannot, he cannot fail. One more time, he cannot fail, he cannot fail. He'll answer you. He'll answer you. Yes. 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 
And so, Lord, we thank you for the conference. Thank you for Bishop Jerry Macklin. Thank you, dear Lord, that while we worshiped you, you have fixed things, even in our home city, that we might not have been able to deal with even if we'd been there. But you fought the battle for us, and you dealt with it by your power. Now we go home to victory and to accomplishment. We will be blessed. Our church will be blessed. Our families will be blessed. Our community will be blessed. Souls will be saved. And God will be glorified in Jesus' name. Thank the Lord. Let the church sing amen.